How do you beat Magnus Carlsen six times in 2021? I feel it's important to look at Magnus's games because the truth is he doesn't lose often. So that's what I'm going to go through in this video. First up, Magnus is playing Wesley So. He's 27, Rapid World number 7 from the USA. In the next game, I will look at Magnus playing Hikaru Nakamura. He is 33, Rapid World number 3, also from the USA. So first up, the time control. Both sides have 15 minutes on the clock, plus 10 seconds per move. This game took place in a grand chess tour. e4, c5, the Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5. Now Magnus plays e5. Very surprising move. Normally, we can play e6. d6 is also possible, but e5 is played today to get control over d4. Castle, bishop d6. Very strange setup. You're putting your bishop in front of this pawn. But what is Magnus's idea? Well, this bishop defends the c5 and the e5 pawn. c3, a6, bishop back, b5, bishop b3. Lining the bishop on this diagonal against the f7 pawn. Knight e7. And now Wesley, he just strikes in the center with d4. Already, I really like white's position. And I find that it's going to be a lot easier to play with the white pieces. c4, shut out the bishop. Bishop retreats and knight g6. Wesley now opens up the position, because if d5, then knight b8 is possible, but also knight e7. So it's time to open up the position to give white's pieces some chances to take. And guess what? In this position, he doesn't even take back. He just goes bishop e7, because the knight is going to recapture the pawn on e5. He doesn't want to play bishop takes, because with this move, he loses the bishop pair. Take, take. And now, f4. Already, white has a big position. So he goes bishop e7. Knight d4. Planning to come to f5? Maybe. Knight takes e5. f4. Kicking this knight away. And already, I think white has a big position. White has a big advantage already. And I know I said knight f5 before, but Wesley now transforms the structure. Take, take. Queens can come off, but no. There's no point in swapping queens off when... White has a majority. He goes queen h5. He's got four versus three on the king side. And he's got good attacking chances. Once those pawns move, then those bishops are just going to be so powerful. Queen b6 check. King h1, queen c5. Good move from Carson. Offering a queen trade, but no. No trade. Castle. Bishop e3. Attack the queen. Queen moves. Queen goes back to h5. c5. So then the bishop can come in the game. Knight d2, bishop b7. Wesley now plays e5. You attack the queen, and queen goes to c7. White has seven minutes. Black has three minutes. He's got a good position, and he's up four minutes on the clock. That is a big deal. Knight f3. Notice in this position, the knight on g6 is being defended by the two pawns. The queen and bishop attack it. But now, Magnus plays h6. The reason he did that, he's, he's got to stop knight g5. That's so dangerous. At the cost of a pawn. And the cool thing is, Wesley, he doesn't even take it. Because if he takes it, he loses some control. Take, take, take. Queen c6, you can offer a trade if white trades. Take, take. If queen c6. Take. And this bishop is very powerful. So you don't want to lose control. So he doesn't trade. After h6, he just keeps the pressure with rook e1. Queen c6, you defend. And you put the bishop. You put the queen, I mean, on this diagonal. E6. What a brilliant move from white. Cutting off the coordination. Cutting off the defense from the queen to the knight. E6. If you take with the queen, that just loses. To F5. And you attack both. Queen and knight. You can take. Doesn't matter. Take with the queen. You still attack the queen and knight. So E6. It's a brilliant move from Wesley. Knight H4. And now Wesley unleashes a deadly tactic. So he takes on f7 check, no big deal. After rook takes f7. Here is the tactical moments. So pause the video now, or just let the timer run. Can you find the winning tactical move? White now crashes through in style with queen takes f7 check. Take, knight e5, check. King moves, take, take. White is a rook for a minor piece up. Bishop and knight attack the pawn, so let's defend it with rook e2. Rook e8. Bishop back to c1. Cool move. Bishop just retreats all the way back. Now the rook is active on the e-file as well. Rook c8. King g1. Getting off the diagonal. Bishop f6. 
f5, getting space, also the bishop can come back in the game. b4, bishop d2. Rook d8, bishop e1, really cool reroute. Bishop d2, e1, now the bishop attacks the knight on h4. Also another opportunity, the rook can come into e6 to attack the bishop on c6. b3, going for a tactical shot, but it doesn't work. Take, 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 bishop b5, winning the exchange back, no, c4. Bishop back, and rook f4, threatening to capture on h4, but rook d4. Take, take, check, bishop f2, knight takes f5, and one more move. Very clean finish from Wesley. He just attacks the knight, bishop c2. And the point is, if you move the knight, you can take and then come in on e6. So knight e7, let's say. It's just losing. Let's just grab it. And then maybe rook e6, even b4. White is winning in this endgame. You don't even have to grab it. Another option is if you take this, this is completely losing because now you take with a rook. And the rook is going to win the knight due to the pin on the fr. That's why after bishop c2, Magnus resigned. In this game, Wesley, he just totally crushed Magnus. On to the next game. In this game, Carlsen is playing Nakamura. It's 15 minutes each on the clock. Once again, a rapid game. Nakamura is world number three. e4, e5. Knight 3, knight c6. Bishop c4, bishop c5. We have the Italian. Castle, knight f6. d3, castle, and rook e1. With this move, it does give black this aggressive line, this attacking opportunity, and Nakamura takes it with knight g4. Knight and bishop attack the pawn on f2, so rook e2 defends it, and now king h8, sidestepping the king, so then you can go f5. This is a very aggressive line. h3, you kick the knight back, so the knight has to retreat, right? Wrong. f5, very aggressive way to play. You can't take it, it's just too dangerous. Bishop g5 played. If you take, take. The attack is too dangerous. There's too much pressure on the f-pawn. Knight goes back, queen h4. Bishop e3. Take, take. And now, if you take with the rook, queen takes f2 check, you pick up the rook. But if you take with the pawn, rook f6, game over. Rook h6, queen h1 is mate. That's how dangerous this attack is. f5 played, bishop g5. You attack the queen, knight now comes back. Knight c3, d6, and knight d5, using the pin from the bishop. Taking once in the center, take, take, because it opens up the f4. Now bishop e6. Trades now happen. Take, take. Both bishops are being attacked. Take, take. So what do we have here? Opposite bishops in this middle game, but black's bishop is superior to white's because he's got a clear target on f2. c3, good move, controlling the key central squares. Queen f6, you attack the bishop, bishop moves. Knight e7, time to reroute this knight. This knight is doing nothing. Queen d2, you attack that pawn. And Nakamura chooses to defend it with rook g8. So then the other rook can come in the game, rather than playing h6. Rook g8, b4, bishop back, a4. Typical way in the Italian, get space on the queen side. And you get space by attacking the bishop, a5. You stop white getting any more space. Queen a2. Planning to come into e6, maybe to offer a queen trade. I think white has to reduce the pressure here. Black is the one attacking. Queen g6, queen e6, queen g7, no trade. Take, bishop takes a5. So it is off the diagonal, but it's, it can come back anytime. Rook b1, you attack the pawn, rook a7. Defending the pawn and the bishop on a5. Queen c4, queen g6. Rook b5, you attack the bishop, c6. So it looks like rook b5 is a wasted move, but what is Carlson's idea? He actually wants to crash through. Knight takes e5, Carlson sacrifices. A knight for two pawns. Take, take. Rook attacks knight, so you defend it with queen g7. Right? Wrong. That's the amazing thing. When rook attacks knight, you don't have to defend it. That's the cool thing. And maybe, maybe this is the move Carlson missed. Rook d8, a brilliant move. So the first question must be, what happens if you take the knight? You lose. Rook check, king moves, check, win the rook. So check, king has to go to h2, and then you pick up the rook. Fantastic move. Rook d8, this is the star move of the game by Nakamura. Rook d8 played. Rook e6, you attack the queen, queen g7, just defend the knight. g3, give the king a bit of space. Rook back to a8, rook on a7, doing nothing. Also the rook. Defends the rook and the bishop. King up. Knight g6 coming into e5. So white plays e5 himself to stop it. Bishop c7. This is the target. With this pawn push, 
it looks like black is going to round up this pawn. Bishop f5, knight takes e5. By the way, you can't play f4. Maybe this is something Carlson missed. Because take, take, and now we have this really cool move. Using the pin on the g file, h5. And if you take, the knight takes f4 check, and we're just winning everything. By the way, it's really cool actually here. Knight takes f4 is double check. It's double discovered check. And you're going to pick up something. You're going to pick up everything. Knight takes e5 played. In his position, Carlson, he's in time trouble. He's got 36 seconds, but Nakamura has 3 minutes 55. Queen b4, planning to go rook e7, but also queen attacks b7. Rook f8, attack the bishop. Rook e7, you attack the queen. But rook f7, defending along the 7th rank. Queen b7, attack both, but rook f8. Very cool. X-ray defense from the queen and the rook to defend the bishop. Cool. Take, take. Pressure on the f-file. Move the bishop away. h5. Get the pawns rolling. White gets the pawn back, but queen c4. Cool double attack. Bishop b5. Cool x-ray defense. The bishop defends the rook on e2. But now queen takes c3. So now Kamura gets his pawn back. The queen is very well placed. The defends the knight and the bishop. Queen e4. Queen c5. Attack f2 and defend the knight. Everything defends everything. Really cool. Rook c2. Queen d6. Nakamura goes for this diagonal now. Bishop e2. h4. Cool move. Because opening it up. And now knight g6. Reroute. Queen h2 and queen takes f2 is mate. So if you blunder with taking a pawn. Check. King moves. And mate on f2. Knight g6 played. King f1. Bishop b6. Bishop f3. Block the pressure on the f-pawn. Knight e5. Attack the bishop. Rook d2. Attack the queen. You attack me, I attack you. That's been the theme throughout this entire game. Now queen c5. Once again, attacking f2. And coming into c1 as well. And the knight attacks the bishop. Rook c2. And this is the cool moment. So you can pause the video now or let the timer run. What can black play now? The cool move is you don't even have to move the queen. You can play knight takes f3. And we're going for the d2 square. We're going for the fork. 28 seconds against 39 seconds. But black is now completely winning. Rook takes queen. Check. King moves. Take. Black is up a knight and bishop. But why are so many pawns? Can he finish it off? Rook c6. Attack the bishop. Take on f2. Take. Take. So knight and bishop for three pawns. But these pawns are not going anywhere anytime soon. Take. Push. Knight e4, check, and knight back to b7, check, up, rook a8, time to round up that pawn. Can't defend it. There's no good way to defend this pawn, and in this position, Magnus actually blundered with rook f5, allowing a fork. Knights, they're just so tricky, and anyone, even the best player in the world, can fall for a fork. Knight d6, check, game over. He's going to lose the rook. If Magnus had saved his rook with rook g5, check, king moves. Get the pawn, and then knight and bishop. By the way, if you guys are interested, on the first day of this year, January 2021, I did a knight and bishop video. This checkmate was actually seen in a high-level game between Levon Aronian and MVL. So, I'm going to attach this video in the top right corner. Why is this video called Beat Magnus Six Times in 2021? It's because the first two games were over here, and the next two games were over here. Beating Magnus twice, beating Magnus four times. I feel it is important to do this video because Magnus Carlsen. The truth is he doesn't lose many games.